CTEC solutions. Given our brief, we identified three key criteria to design to. We wanted to minimize the cost of our solution. We wanted to minimize the disruptions caused to gas production. And we wanted to make sure our solution was easy to install. Here are our proposals. Cantilever concept. The module can be attached to the side of the superstructure. There is precedent for this where the same solution was used on the older platform. There is no available space on the top of the platform and therefore an effective solution is to fix the module to the structure using a cantilever. This can be done using a simple truss structure, suspending the module using tension cables or propping the structure from below. On assessing the feasibility of these solu solutions, we concluded that a simple truss was the most effective way of achieving this. The main benefit of the cantilever is that this is a simple and cheap solution since it requires less material and installation is less complicated than some of the other methods. The design process is de depicted. Adding the new module directly to the superstructure imposes significant additional loads on the structure, which may go beyond its design loading. After consulting with the client, we determined that the feasibility of the solution is dependent upon specific topside data. It is unlikely that the local loading can be supported by the top side, and therefore members will require reinforcing. This will lead to potentially significant delays in gas production, and therefore this is probably not a viable solution. Floating concept The second proposal is a floating structure. We began by researching floating structures in the wind turbine industry, as these are on a similar scale and can serve as precedent. There are three types commonly used, TLPs, spars and semi-submersibles. The main challenge is to limit dynamic motion of the platform. To minimize the risk of impact, we decided to build the platform such that it is not connected to the existing one. Maintenance will have to be carried out via a vessel from land and new flow lines will have to be installed. To maximize stability, we decided on a truss spar platform. These are steel-weighted cylinder structures that rely on having a low center of gravity and a high center of buoyancy. To minimize vortex-induced motion, the hull will have to be straked. For the foundations, we will use four suction caissons. These work by pumping out seawater from the top to achieve a downward suction into the seabed. The spar itself is dry towed to location and upended by pumping seawater into its tank. It is then tied down to the suction anchors. The final stage of the construction is to connect a new flow line from the BCM to the existing pipelines. The main advantage to this concept is the short installation time required. It is also a reliable technology with many precedents in the industry. One important issue is accessibility, which could mean that a sudden breakdown of the BCM could not be dealt with immediately. There is also a risk of inducing motion, which could compromise the serviceability of the BCM and could cause fatigue in the pipeline in the long term. Fixed structure concept. Our third proposal is to construct a new jacket. We looked at the types commonly used in the industry, the conventional fixed jacket, the compliant tower, and the conductor support system. By comparing the pros and cons of these, we came up with a satellite triangular jacket, which is suitable for our intermediate water depth of 136 meters. The new jacket will be 160 meters high to match the level of the Albion platform. Bracings will be provided to resist fluid loadings. A double-decker truss bridge will connect both the jackets to allow pipeline connections and personnel access for maintenance. The dimensions of the bridge are as shown on this slide. The jacket will be fabricated onshore and transported offshore using a barge. At the location of installation, the barge is ballasted and the jacket is slid into the water. The valves at the bottom of the legs are then opened to allow the water to enter. Once the water enters the legs, the bottom of the jacket will sink. Using GPS, the jacket is hoisted into its final location. In summary, this structure is entirely self-reliant and imposes very minimal loading on the existing platform. The design can also withstand extreme conditions and has been used and proven in many existing offshore platforms. The total cost of this solution is estimated at $72 million. Although this option is more costly and takes a relatively longer time to be completed, it is a reliable and safe option. Monocolumn concept. This proposal considers a monocolumn directly connected to the foundations, which will allow transferring gravity loads straight to the ground. Lateral bracing will be connected to the top of the existing jacket to transfer environmental loading. This concept addresses the issue of limited space on the existing platform. While looking into possible options, risks were assessed. The main ones included possible collision of the unit with the existing structure during installation, failure of foundations and exceedance of the budget. Sustainability was considered by minimizing the construction and installation times. This is achieved by performing most of the works onshore, 
then transporting them on a column to the site where it is installed by an offshore crane. The main risks include possible collision of the unit with the existing structure during installation, failure of foundations and lack of industry precedence. To summarize, this proposal is a cost-effective novel solution which minimizes loads on the existing structure and addresses the issue of limited space. It is also relatively easy to construct and install. However, the monocolumn is also susceptible to corrosion and buckling, therefore full assessment of the existing structure and its foundation is required. Subsea concept. Our final proposal is to place the BCM on the seabed. Specialist compression equipment would be required to operate underwater and a steel frame would be constructed to house all relevant components. Subsea processing has been experimented with since the 1970s, but has grown massively in terms of both interest and investment in recent years. From a qualitative analysis of initial ideas, we concluded that the structural frame shown was the lower risk solution since it requires minimal modifications to the existing jacket and is similar to existing subsea support frames such as that on the Gulfax project. The installation of the subsea module involves carrying it out on a barge and using a floating crane and ROVs to install the module. Simple structural and geotechnical calculations were completed to estimate a material cost. Primary tubular members should have a typical diameter of 1.5 metres and a wall thickness of around 35 mil. For the suction case on foundations, a diameter of 7.5 metres and a wall thickness of around 100 mil is required for a factor of safety of 2. These were calculated using simple bearing capacity theory and considerations of skin friction. As the subsea solution is independent of the existing structure, we ensure that the structural and fluid loading conditions it was designed for are still valid. Additionally, it presents an opportunity to get ahead within the energy and petroleum sector and develop expertise in a growing market. This ranking system uses parameters which are weighted depending upon their importance to the client. Each proposal was evaluated qualitatively and using quantitative information. We concluded that the best solutions were the cantilever and the monocolumn. After meeting with the client, however, we have decided to move forward with the subsea solution and the monocolumn. Thank you.